So I think the the really interesting thing that people might not be educated or aware of when it comes to addiction uh, and alcoholism is that it's it's actually classified as a disease, um, and it's kind of a threefold disease where it's uh, there's an element that is in the body, which is there's a physical allergy, um, and then there's a mental aspect to it where which is called, we refer to as the mental obsession. Um, and then there's a spiritual component that we refer to as the spiritual malady, like a spiritual sickness. And, um, you know, to define what it means to have alcoholism is to, to understand what that disease is and how it works on a person. Uh, and a lot of people don't, don't realize, like, without one of those components, it, you can't, you don't actually have the full cycle. Um, so, for example, for me, what I had to learn uh, in recovery about myself and, the, and my condition is that uh, I have, I'm different from other people. I have a physical allergy to alcohol and drugs. So if I take a drink or I do drugs, I see other people like, you know, I've been on dates and, you know, a girl will order a glass of wine and leave it half full and it's like, wait, why? Uh, and it's because I recognize I never had that ability. I didn't have the ability to not, to stop. And so the physical allergy to alcohol is overconsumption. So first I have a drink and then I want to have more and then I know I should stop, but I actually can't. So the body responds to alcohol like a, like a, a person who's dehydrated in the desert finds an oasis of water and keeps drinking it, or how sailors who, who get shipwrecked at sea drink the ocean water, even though they're so dehydrated from being in the sun on rafts, they drink the sea water, even though the salt water is killing them. Uh, it, that's kind of how the physical allergy uh, happens to the alcoholic or the drug addict. And that's fine, because then you could just, if you know that about yourself, you would be able to just abstain and just not drink, and then there would be no problem, which, that's where the mental obsession comes in. So the mental component of addiction and alcoholism uh, is the mental obsession. And it's the way that we process anxiety and fear and shame and regret, uh, you know, anxiety and fear about the future, um, shame and regret about the past. Uh, and so we start to obsess throughout the day about, you know, getting drunk. So all we can, we get, we become restless, irritable, and discontent until we can find the ease and comfort that we experience from taking a drink. But we see other people drinking and their lives are fine and our lives become a train wreck because we have a physical allergy and we can't stop. So that's kind of like the two part, it's, that's kind of like the two parts of the cycle where you know you have a physical allergy, so you should just stop, but you can't because mentally you're obsessed with drinking or doing drugs. The third part of that is a, is a spiritual aspect and many alcoholics and addicts, when they are extremely intoxicated, do incredibly strange and horrible things or just embarrassing things when they're under the influence. Uh, we black out, we don't know what happened, we wake up the next day and then all of a sudden that, that fear of oh, what did I do last night the shame, the remorse, the guilt, the memories come up, you go to work, you see your friends and people are like, oh, they tell you about what you did and you, you become embarrassed and ashamed. On a spiritual level, you feel uncomfortable. And then that's when the mental obsession kicks in. So it's all very connected. So it's like literally the physical allergy, right, from drinking is sets off this whole thing in motion. So a lot of people don't realize they lose the power of choice. And, and to just talk about it in the first person is leaving out a large component of, you know, what it is to live with uh, someone or, or yourself that has alcohol, alcoholism or suffers from drug addiction. Because for every drug addict and alcoholic, you have to think about how many family members um, business partners, employers, employees, boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives that are connected to this person. Um, and it's like one of those diseases that uh, 
it affects everyone whose life touches the sufferer. And it's one of those diseases where it's like, if you had cancer, everyone would feel bad and no one would be angry and there wouldn't be animosity. But with the alcoholic, that's not the case because other people who don't have the disease don't understand why the person is sick or why they don't have the willpower or why it's because they're actually metaphysically different. Their brain chemistry is different. Their body chemistry is different. Some people, you know, are gluten intolerant or can't have dairy. Alcoholics can't have alcohol. And uh, it's just an interesting thing. And it affects the, like the lives of children, like a lot of kids, you know, I, I grew up with an alcoholic parent and I remember blaming myself because when we're kids, we don't know any better. And so a lot of it, the wires get crossed where you start to think that if this person loved me, they just want to drink because they do bad things when they drink. Um, and then you want to start controlling behavior because you take everything else, you take everything on yourself. Um, you take the responsibility of the family dynamic on yourself when the parent is unavailable to, to you know, have that, to maintain that, that family structure and that model. Parents are supposed to model for us as children what we're supposed to be and when we're not getting those things we're, we are acutely aware at a very young age um, and so you know there are all there are so many different um, forms of, of mental health issues that arise from alcoholism and addiction or just constant contact with an alcoholic or an addict and I think that that in large is something that people aren't talking about enough you know and I think uh, my experience has been I had to get sober and for me I have alcoholism and I'm an addict and you know 10 years later I'm still dealing with the kind of psychological and mental issues that accompany a child who grew up in an alcoholic household with an alcoholic parent um, or mentally ill family members so for many of us the journey just doesn't stop like in recovery we call them double winners <laughs> it's like uh, if you have, if you're, if you qualify for Al-Anon, and Al-Anon is, is a program that's much like uh, a recovery program for alcoholics, but Al-Anon specifically is for family members of people who are uh, alcoholics and addicts, and it's like kind of a group sessions where people can come together and they tell their stories, and um, you know, so it's just, it's, there's help out there and it's available to people, um, and you know, uh, it's just it's good to have these conversations and kind of open things up so people can know that they're not alone uh, and I mean that's the reason why the song we wrote the song sober on the new record I think that there is a bigger untold story and I think many of my uh, many of the my favorite artists or artists of influence throughout my formative years and even as an adult when they talk about their own personal struggles with addiction it's always from the first person's perspective of their own suffering and their own struggles. And our song Sober really illuminates the dynamic of being a person who loves someone who is an addict and alcoholic, what the alcoholic addict is actually going through, and then the solution at the end, um, you know, at the end of the, the cycle of self-abuse and walking into recovery and walking through recovery and making it a part of a daily routine for you know for the rest of our lives and so anyway i just wanted to make this uh i'm just gonna keep making these psas and uh yeah it's a uh, send me messages it's good to talk to you guys i met a lot of people I, I i met a really nice family last night and um we had a really great conversation about this stuff and you know this is kind of like the the benefit about being in a band and you know, getting to do what we do and connecting with people, because I feel like you guys are my people, and, and um, you know, I don't, I don't feel alone anymore, because uh, we all have each other. And so, I really hope everyone's doing good today. I always tell everybody, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and uh, yeah, we'll tune in next time. We'll talk to you soon.